Do you ever play with someone that's not very good? Or does your partner ever have a bad game? Unfortunately, you can't just click your fingers and get rid of your partner or get a better partner or make them start playing well. But there are quite a few things you can do to still win matches. And in this video, we're gonna share six of our best tips. So if you're playing against a pair where one player is a lot weaker, you're going to try and hit the majority of your shots to that player. And this means that in the same situation, there's a good chance your opponents will do this to you, especially trying to move your partner around the back of the court. So one way to combat this is to get your partner to the net. And you want to do this because firstly, it's generally easier at the net as these shots require a shorter swing and less power. And it's also harder for your opponents to keep hitting to the net because they can either play a loose shot, which makes it easier for your partner, or they have to play it tight, which means they have more chance of making a mistake. So we have two ways for you to get into this formation. Our first example is when you're side by side. Here, you can play a block into space and your partner moves forwards to the net straight away. Most players will lift this, so the shuttle will then go to you. But if they do try and play this to your partner at the net, there's a good chance it will be a loose shot and hopefully your partner can kill it and win the rally. That would be a nice confidence booster for them. This is of course assuming you've played a good block and your opponents are taking it late. Obviously, if they're hitting the shuttle above the height of the net, then this could be very scary for your partner. So our second way to get your partner to the net is to play early return of serves hard down your side of the court, and then you move backwards straight away with your partner moving forwards. If you play a good return of serve, it will be really difficult for your opponents to lift it cross court over your partner's head. And if your partner is returning, they can play net shots and stay in to instantly get you into this front and back formation. Now, as with all of these tips we're going to give, this will of course depend on your partner's strengths and weaknesses. For example, if they have a big smash, then you might move forwards to the net more and let them play more rear court shots. Okay, let's move on to our second tip, which is to cover more of the court. Covering more of the court means you play more shots and hopefully have a better chance of winning the rally. As we've just said, one way to do this is when you're in an attacking formation. Your partner is at the net and you pretty much cover the whole of the court. If you're in a defensive formation, then we'd recommend having an understanding with your partner that you'll take everything down the middle and they'll just need to get anything around their body or tramline. This isn't something we'd advise doing if you're playing with someone a similar standard to you, as you can get much better coverage defending the right way. And if you're not sure what this right way is, we'll link to our video discussing this below. Now we've even seen lots of people actually go in front of their partner and take a drop shot almost in their tram lines. But this probably isn't something we'd recommend, as it often leads to you both getting in a worse position. How extreme you take this court coverage will probably depend on A, how much you want to win, B, how bad your partner actually is, and C, how tolerant your partner will be to you taking all of their shots. But this probably leads back to point A. If you want to win so bad that you don't care, then that's your choice to make. A bonus point for this section is that people can often play worse if they're trying to overcompensate for their partner and take too many shots, or maybe even try and play too many winning shots. This might have already happened to you. So what should you do instead? Well, you need to play more intelligent shots, and this is our third tip and it's a little more advanced than the two we've just covered. Playing more intelligent shots will help you set yourself and your partner up to win more rallies. It can also help you control the game and minimize your partner's weaknesses. So we have three examples of what we mean by intelligent shots, starting with the easiest and then getting more advanced. Level one, when you need to lift, don't lift it cross court. With some partners, you might lift cross to move your opponents, but with a weaker partner, rather than being able to take advantage of this, their defence might not be as good and they might play a weak reply or may not even be able to get the attack back at all. So we'd advise you to play straight lifts to keep the majority of the attacking shots on you. And if they do smash it cross, your partner has more time to react as the shuttle has further to travel. And it's important to mention that you should also hit straight shots in your attack too, like in your drives and smashes. So level two is to not play hard in the mid court. If you do, it could expose a lot of gaps in the court because your partner might not be good enough to move out and cover you. Instead, you can play more controlled shots, especially to the middle, to create indecision between your opponents and also reduce the angles they can play. This then means it's harder for them to move your weaker partner at the net. Level three is our most advanced example, and this is to drive or smash into an awkward position where it's really hard to hit it cross court to your weaker partner. A great shot that Greg loves to do is a reverse drive, which adds some deception and often puts the opponent into a difficult position. Being consistent when playing with a weaker partner is so important no matter what level you play at. There's a good chance they'll be making lots of mistakes or just not winning any points, 
So again, you can't try and win the point when you only have a 10% chance of doing so. You should obviously try and be consistent and play these intelligent shots when you're not playing with a weaker partner too. Next, you need to be intelligent in what you do in the serve and return situation, which is our fourth tip. Generally, if you're a better player, you're likely to have a better serve and return of serve. That is, if you actually are a better player. So what can you do to dominate the serve and return situation? Well, we've got two points for you. Firstly, if you want to win, you need to set up to play to both of your strengths. For example, if your weaker partner has a good serve, then you'd let them serve first, or you would return first. And secondly, you need to think about trying to win the point in the first three shots, as this is a great opportunity to win the rally without your partner even hitting a shot. Yes, so you can serve to a certain place to encourage your opponents to play certain shots, which you can then look for. I actually did this in a recent video where I served to different places and correctly predicted the return each time. To do this, it was not just important to have a good serve to a specific area, but also have a big presence at the net afterwards. A second example is what we talked about earlier in the video, returning the serve hard down your side and then looking for the straight reply. A lot of these examples are most relevant for level doubles, but we've actually covered what you should do for mixed doubles serve and return in an entire video, which we'll link in the description below. We have one final point for this section, and this is to not change your partner's serving or returning during the match. Let them do their favorite serves or returns, and you, as the stronger player, need to work around this. That is, of course, unless you're losing every point because of these. And this is where you need to improve your communication with your weaker partner, which is our fifth tip. And we're not talking about in between the rallies or even before the match, although we will get onto that. Here we're talking about how you communicate during the rallies. This tip will hopefully help you avoid confusion and that horrible moment of the shuttle landing in between you and your partner. A lot of people are maybe embarrassed to shout on the court, but honestly, this is so important. Yeah, so try shouting either mine or yours, you or me. Here's an example of our friend Chris Language, who used to communicate with his partner Marcus very well. Marcus, 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 Marcus. As the stronger player, you'll likely have more confidence on court, so don't be afraid to take the lead on this. It's about being clear to help you always know who's taking which shot. Okay, that's what you should do during the rallies, but what we found can make a huge difference between winning and losing with a weaker partner is how you communicate both before the match and also in between the rallies. This is tip number six, so let's explain what you might be doing wrong and what you can do to go right. Without getting too sciencey, as humans, we crave belonging and acceptance. Therefore, if we're not supportive of our partner, they probably won't respond well to this as they'll get more stressed and nervous and will likely play worse. This won't just be for the rest of the game, but whenever they next play with you, which is exactly the opposite of what you want. So don't put pressure on them. Don't wave your arms or roll your eyes when they miss a shot. Don't shout at them and tell them they're rubbish and definitely don't slap them. You might think we're joking, but we've seen it happen. Instead, you need to encourage your partner. As human psychology studies suggest, this will have a few key benefits. Being positive to your partner can enhance their creativity, which might help them to not just play safe and predictable shots. It can also help with their ability to process information, which means that they can develop and implement tactics a lot better. And these are just two examples as to why encouragement can lead to a better performance. Yeah, and I'm going to be honest with you here and admit that there have been times where I've wanted to win so much, I've lost the ability to control my emotions and even been visibly annoyed when my partner has made a mistake. Now you know how I've perfected the eye roll. But in all seriousness, I wanted to share this because I know that it's not just me who expresses these emotions on court and it is possible to change. And hopefully Jenny and the other partners that I've had, that I'm still friends with by the way, would agree to this. But it's important to mention here that some people might actually want you to be angry at them when they make a mistake. This might get them angry and actually play better. But we found it's best to ask your weaker partner what they respond well to on court. Do they like you to talk to them in between every rally? Do they like constructive criticism? Or do they just like encouragement? And at the end of the day, you have to remember that they're hopefully trying their best and that you both want to enjoy playing badminton. We hope these six tips will help you win more matches if you're playing with a weaker partner, if they are actually weaker than you, that is. This has been a big video for us to prepare and film. So if you're still with us at this point, we'd love for you to leave a racket emoji in the comments below. And if you found this video useful, we'd love you to share it with someone who gets annoyed with their partner, or maybe subtly suggest your weaker partner to watch some of our other videos to hopefully help them improve. Here's our intermediate playlist. And obviously don't forget to give the video a like and smash the subscribe button if you haven't already. Over 70% if you haven't. I'll see you on another one very soon.